Hello, my name is Sydney Walters, and this is a podcast about magnesium. Maggie wiped her brow and looked up from her machine. She had been assigned to magnesium in good duty, but could no longer focus due to the radio blaring. Some of her co-workers across a plant cried out and others jumped for joy. She was eager to see what the commotion was about, and Maggie asked her fellow female co-workers. She learned that the invasion of Normandy had been a huge success for the Allies. A single tear rolled down Maggie's cheek as she realized they finally had a fighting chance in winning the war. It had all started when Maggie's husband, along with many other American men, left to fight for the Allies. Jobs had been left behind, and America was feeling the gap in the workforce. America couldn't keep up with Germany's rapid production of magnesium due to lack of manpower in plants. Germany had been able to produce aircrafts and automobiles at a dizzying speed and could, therefore, attack the Allies with stealth and on numerous fronts. This had been the last straw for Maggie, who, like so many brave women of the time, marched her way down to the Hendrickson Magnesium plant and asked for an application. She knew magnesium had the power to create better planes for the Allies, since magnesium made the planes lighter without compromising strength. She vowed to help the war effort by working in the factory to help separate magnesium from the water it was dissolved in, then by forming it into sheets and ingots, which later became airplane engines or even steering wheels. Helping her country had always been a dream for Maggie, and this was a dream come true. She faced many dangers in her day-to-day life. She had become a factory worker at the Hendrickson Magnesium Plant in southern Nebraska. She drove forklifts, wrapped ingots for shipping, and made asbestos gloves to handle the ingots. She occasionally repaired gas masks when needed, but she preferred working with the ingots, as it was the most palpable evidence of her aid in the war. The machinery was heavy and daunting. There had been numerous stories of workers, both men and women, losing limbs due to machinery mishaps. Maggie tried not to think about this as she worked. She instead thought of her husband and all the men fighting across seas and all the women fighting at home to help them. Maggie's sons had started to tease her after the Rosie the Riveter posters had been plastered across the town. She secretly didn't mind it when they called her Magnesium Maggie. Things weren't looking particularly good for the Allies. However, even though the women faced many obstacles, they never lost faith that they could win the war. Magnesium Maggie knew the war had been dragging on and that the lives of innocent people were at stake. She worried about the Allies, but was calmed by the fact that the Allies could now produce just as many aircrafts and automobiles as the Axis powers. There would be no stark disadvantage on her watch. She had faith that the Allies would win. The news of the triumphant Normandy filled the Hendrickson plant with hope and pride. The women of the plant agreed to stay after hours that day in order to produce as much metal as possible, hoping to seal the victory. The Allies accepted the Axis powers surrender on September 2, 1945. The men fighting overseas could finally come home. Although the women didn't need to fill as many spots in the workforce, many of them remained. It would forever impact the American workforce, and many women decided to remain as employees of the Hendrickson Magnesium plant. Maggie was begged personally by her boss to remain an employee, and she complied. She would forever feel thankful for her days working in Hendrickson and her opportunity to create such a vital resource that helped the Allies to win the war. (music) 